because of the hiccups in the IT pro at the beginning, I realized that we are we don't have time for discussions whatsoever. And what I would like to suggest to all our participants, who are now 62, welcome all of you, uh, that uh, we proceed with the panel one, and that you kindly keep your questions for the uh, end of the panel one, or towards the end, uh, that uh, both are uh, quite acceptable. And um, I will uh, be securing the uh, moderation of the panel one uh, upon the uh, request of Dr. Shirin Asim. Uh, but in actual fact, we are friends and partners since a long time, so I'm happy to oblige. So without further ado, uh, I would like to uh, introduce to you the uh, topic of the panel we are going to uh, review and discuss together and uh, then the uh, panelists so uh, the uh, the panelists represent a very broad a very broad uh, spectrum of uh, of farmers organizations from north africa but as well uh, with two major representatives from the European farmers' organizations. And we do hope that this exchange between North and South of the Mediterranean will, be, uh, will, be, will bring what we hope uh, it will bring in terms of exchanges. And we have a major uh, specialist and expert with us, uh, Dr. Ali Abusaba, the Director General of ICARDA, who uh, will give his uh, well-seasoned and uh, deep uh, knowledge of the challenges to face and the potential way forward. So we will dis this they will present the farmers' organization outlook in North Africa and in Europe and uh, deal with some of the key regional challenges pertaining to farmers' organizations, such as the adaptation of agriculture to climate change, such as linking farmers to research, how to make small-scale farming systems commercially viable, and developing smart and sustainable farming within new value chain models. We will now present you the profile of the panelists so that you know who is going to be uh, discussing with, the, with, with us, and then proceed with the presentations. So, Mr. Dries Belfadla. There he is. Mr. Dries Belfadla uh, is naming himself as a proud farmer and member of the uh, Conseil Economique et Social et Environnemental du Maroc. And he is, uh, he has conducted extensive studies on agriculture uh, production in Moroccan and French universities and presides a number of organizations and member of several national and international organizations. Uh, we have not received um, a bio from uh, engineer Abdelmejid Azar but we know that he is uh, going to be represented by Mr. Fathi Ben Khalifa, economic advisor, uh, and uh, Mrs. Reem Fershishi, secretary general, both from the Tunisian Union of Agriculture and Fisheries. Uh, we will then have the Central Agriculture Cooperative Union uh, of Egypt, 
The chairman, Engineer Mamdou Hamada, will be represented by Engineer Khalid Hamad, who is Deputy Manager of the organization. Uh, Mr. Hamad is a specialist of the uh, cooperative world and has developed an extensive number of uh, specialized vertical cooperative with uh, a series of manuals developed with the ILO. We will then have Mr. Mr. Abdel Karim Adi. Sorry, I may be uh, not pronouncing properly. Uh, Mr. Adi is from the International Olive Council, and he is the head of olive growing. Uh, this is a very interesting structure in the sense that it is really already a regional organization. We will then have the pleasure to listen to my dear friend, Mrs. Iman Kamil, who is the executive director of HEA, our Horticulture Export Improvement Association. HEA is, uh, is the reason why HEA is the HEA is the re HEA is the reason why the exports of fruits and vegetables in Egypt and she has been in global manufacturing and marketing experience in FMCG for a long time and uh, eight years in corporate management in NGO bodies. Iman has a variety of, uh, held a variety of leadership positions in food processing businesses and currently as executive director of HEA. And she led HEA through the transformation of Upper Egypt small farmers from fragment, fragmented farmers to grouping them and forming associations linking them to local and global exporters aiming at increasing their income and creating jobs. Iman holds a bachelor degree in international business and an MBA from Maastricht School of Management in marketing and international business. As you can see, African-Europe relations are high on the, on the agenda. And then we will have Mr. Amin Matawi Belabes from Morocco. Mr. Uh, Belabes is the managing director of the Cooperative Marocaine de Primeur. So we will uh, hear about fruits and vegetables from both ends of North Africa, Egypt and Morocco. And then we will have our uh, Dr. Mohamed El Fatih Abdel Wahab, who is the cooperative consultant in Sudan, but he also has a major position in uh, uh, Oxford uh, organization. Dr. Abdel Wahab is a certified trainer in building the capacities of cooperatives, microfinance, and uh, we are expecting as well Mrs. Samira Obala, who is the president of the National Association of Peasant Women Morocco, but we did not receive her bio. We hope that she will join us. We will. Uh, then receive our two European colleagues, Dr. Daniele Rossi, my dear friend, the EU coordinator of national food technology platforms, NFTPS, 
uh, in Europe. He's the chairman of the research and innovation uh, work package within the European Federation of Farmers and Agro Cooperatives, Copa Cogeca Europe, and the delegate for research and innovation of Contagricultura, and which is, as you all know, the Confederation of Farmers in Italy. He has also been the former director general of Confindustria, the Food and Drink Industry Federation, Federalimentare in Italy. And last but not least, Mr. Keith Brockland, who is also representing a farmers organization. And uh, better, it's the Dutch farmers organization, but well known under the name AgriTerra. Dr. Blokland is the founder and CEO of AgriTerra since 1997. I had the pleasure to meet him during a fact-finding mission of Dutch cooperatives uh, with the, uh, the with the embassy of the of the Netherlands. He's also a member of the EU AU Task Force Rural Africa, and he specializes in economics, cultural anthropology, and holds a PhD in social science. Agriterra is the international farmer to farmer advice, training, and exchange, and uh, also involved in cooperative business development for agro industrialization, sustainable intensification, and improved policy environment. So, without further, further ado, we are going to start by welcoming Mr. Dries Belfadla. So, Engineer Dries, you are with us? Hello? Engineer Dries Belfadla. Hmm. We are not hearing Engineer Dries Belfadla. Ibrahim, can you check that he's among the participants? We seem, we seem to have an issue with the engineer Dries Belfadla. However, I would very much like that we take one minute, one minute uh, before shifting to the follow-up uh, participant, because uh, I personally consider that the answers of engineer Dries Belfadla are extremely important and really to the point. So, if you don't mind, we'll take one minute to review those uh, to, re to review those uh, this table, so that uh, we could take it in consideration in the uh, in the discussions later on and in the wrap up.
Well, uh, dear participants, we, we are going to uh, introduce Mr. Abdel Kirim Hadi uh, now because we have not been able to track uh, the representatives of the Tunisian Union of Agriculture and Fisheries from Tunisia. They were to be with us. And as well, engineer Khalid Hamed from the Central Agriculture Cooperative Union are uh, is uh, stuck in, in the traffic. So we will uh, invite Mr. Abdel Kirim Adi to kindly come to the floor and, uh, and make his presentation. Uh, Mr. Abdel Kirim Adi, you are with us, I think. Yes, yes. Yes. Thank you. So uh, I'll please go ahead. Uh, uh, if you permit me, uh, I will. Uh, I have prepared one one uh, small presentation. Yes, please. Uh, uh, I, I will share with my screen. It's, okay. Uh, okay. One moment, please. Yes, of course. Uh, I would like to indicate to all the participants as well that the uh, table you have seen is a table which you will see for most of the participants, and that is as indicated in the mails we have sent you with the purpose of uh, having your opinion on the key points uh, we uh, wish to be able to uh, address and review in order to start uh, setting up the uh, structure of that future platform. So I believe that Mr. Abdel Karim Hadi is, is ready now and we are ready to listen to you. Please, Mr. Hadi. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, I would to thank uh, the organization to invite uh, me and to invite uh, the International Olive Council. Uh, this is my first time I participate uh, with you and I would like to present my, our organization and all uh, the question uh, that you have sent us will be included more and less in this presentation. Okay, my name is uh, Abdel Krimadi. I am in charge in uh, uh, the technical parts of uh, the olive sector. Uh, one moment, please. The International Olive Council uh, is created more than uh, six years at the service of olive sector. Our organization is the only international organization in the field of olive oil and uh, table olive. It was set up under the auspice of uh, uh, United Na National in uh, 1959 with permanent head square in Madrid, in Spain. Uh, we have uh, an international agreement between our uh, uh, members. Uh, Diarine, it's uh, uh, have many many change. Uh, Diarine uh, many years ago, and the last change in this uh, in this agreement, it was in 2017, was uh, included the, uh, the no traditional producer, and also uh, some observer. Uh, we are more and less than uh, 43 countries. Uh, Union European is uh, a one country. Uh, we are uh, 17 member who pr produce more uh, than 94% of the global olive oil production. Uh, we have also uh, advisor committee is uh, for the private sector. Uh, this is a forum we discuss uh, with the producer, industry, and consumer uh, from all the world. 
uh, we discuss in this uh, in this advisor committee in the meeting of advisor committee all the problem uh, for the the sector also we include uh, in our agreements uh, observer like peru united states australia who's participating in the same of the activity without being member uh, who are uh, the ioc members you see we have uh, uh, north africa we have uh, middle east we have uh, union european as i said uh, they produce uh, more and less than 3000 uh, million uh, tons of olive oil more and less uh, the consumption uh, the distribution between the the, the the production and the consumption is more or less uh, equal the top producer is uh, spain italy greece tunisia turkey and uh, you, as you see uh, the production uh, is not uh, the same uh, for uh, for uh, each year uh, because you know there is uh, some problem in climate change uh, for example uh, we have uh, early flowering disease drought and uh, this is the new phenomenon who affect the the production in the world uh, the distribution of the world oil the consumption uh, you know uh, the 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 world consumption is in, in line uh, line uh, black line uh, you see in green uh, the world consumption uh, and also uh, we have here uh, one idea about uh, union uh, countries and members and the uh, IUC members and no IUC members in red. The top uh, three IUC consumers is uh, Union European, Spain, Italy and Greece, Turkey and Morocco. And for the no uh, IUC members uh, consumers, uh, the top three, we have uh, United States, Brazil and Japan. Uh, the distribution of the world olive oil, uh, as you see, uh, the most important and the big uh, importer is United States, and also with the 36 percent, and also Union European uh, as 15 uh, percent, and you have all uh, the world distribution about the change of uh, olive oil. Uh, this is uh, more details for uh, each country uh, we will uh, discuss after. Uh, we have, uh, we, we are working in three areas. The first one is uh, as our uh, objective in the international agreement. The first area is standardization and recharge. It means all uh, the parts of the norms, the reglementation about olive oil and the uh, olive table uh because we have uh, we need to harmonize uh, all our uh, norms uh, to facilitate uh, the international trade of uh, olive uh, oil products also uh, we have another uh, uh, part of, uh, of our work or our objective is olive uh, growing olive oil technology and technical cooperation uh, I am in charge for this uh, this area. In this area, we we work uh, very uh, closely with the agriculture, with the uh, research center, with the many university to resolve the problem of the agriculture, especially in our sector in olive uh, olive oil. Also, we, we, we make also uh, in the promotion because we have uh, to, to give more information uh, about uh, all the products, uh, how we can uh, make the dissemination uh, of the information for uh, each country uh, or member or no member, but especially we made many uh, promotion campaign 
in uh, China, in Japan, in uh, United States, everywhere uh, to give some information about uh, the benefits of uh, olive oil and also uh, to give some, the most important information uh, uh, about our health. Uh, we are organizing in uh, for the research and uh, standardization about Dr. the Dr. Adi, Dr. Yeah. Adi, one minute, not more. Please. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, as I said, uh, there is uh, an expert group uh, from. خبراء من كل دولة. إذا لدينا خبراء من كل الدول الأعضاء لكي نناقش كل المشكلات التي نواجهها في الأجزاء مثلا الكيميائية ونقوم أيضا بتنظيم بعض. الفعاليات المتعلقة بكيفية اختيار أفضل زيت زيتون في العالم وأيضا لدينا برنامج خاص بالجودة في الدول التي تقوم بإنتاج زيت الزيتون وأيضا نحن نقوم باعتماد المعامل وأيضا نعمل في مجال تكنولوجيا زراعة in linked with, um, as I said, with many international uh, center uh, research, we resolve many problems about the climate change, about how we can, can adapt uh, our uh, uh, profile uh, uh, olive oil varieties uh, uh, according for each, uh, each uh, climate. Uh, also, we have many, many projects about uh, CO2 ad uh, adoption and uh, the promotion, as I said, and thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Adi. That thank was you. extremely interesting. And uh, it would be probably quite interesting to, to look at uh, the uh, structure of the international olive oil as one of the examples to uh, take in consideration in building up the platform with the uh, understanding presented by our two sponsors, Monsieur petit Hugner and uh, Dr. Suleiman. And now we wish to uh, receive Mrs. Iman Kamil. Uh, Good morning, everybody. Uh, one minute to share my presentation. There she is. Uh, somebody is sharing his presentation. Can you allow me to share mine, Dora? Of course, of course, of course, of course. Um, good morning, everybody. My name is Iman Kamel. I'm the executive director of the uh, Horticulture Export Improvement uh, Association. Uh, and in my very short presentation, I will uh, share with you all uh, Haya's experience in sharing uh, innovation and technology and transferring as well trans uh, technology from all over the world to the Egyptian uh, farmer. Uh, first of all, this is uh, a brief uh, about HEA. HEA is an NGO association uh, that was developed uh, 25 years ago in 1996 uh, with uh, an aim objective of transfer and exchange of international good agriculture and logistics practices from European Union, USA, Africa, in some cases like South Africa, to the Egyptian agri community to increase agri exports, boost farmers' income, and create jobs. HEA now has 700 members, growers, and exporters. Also, we do have uh, 45 expert agronomists in different horticulture uh, crops. We have a mission 
uh, to transform Egypt into a significant reliable supplier for horticulture crop to the whole world. And now I will share with you some of our uh, services that we are providing for uh, our uh, small, medium and large uh, farmer. Uh, first uh, services we provide them with uh, updated and innovative uh, extension service, uh, mainly for small, medium, large, as well as uh, extension service in new technology in post-harvest activity, uh, sharing with them international market trends and needs, uh, and linking them with the exporters. Also, we do have uh, a new service uh, that uh, has long has been launched uh, three years ago. We provide uh, certification service, uh, international certificates for uh, all our uh, farmers, associations, big players, big exporters, small. We provide them with like Global Gap, BRC, and all the series of international uh, global certificates at uh, a reduced price in order to elevate and, and teach them how to implement good agriculture uh, practices. This division uh, of HSERT of is uh, a mother company. We report directly to Germany, uh, to Global Gap in Germany. Uh, also, we provide our uh, agriculture community with several logistic service. Uh, for example, we do have a cold store uh, facility for exporting perishable horticulture crop from Cairo airport. Uh, this initiative or this project uh, was launched 20 years ago. It helps uh, the export of fresh produce by air maintain its cold chain. Uh, also, we uh, launched uh, six years ago a, a packing house and a training center in Upper Egypt uh, to help small, mainly small farmers uh, to have the facility to reduce their losses in packing their crops uh, and export directly from Upper Egypt to Europe. Uh, as well, uh, we provide uh, some lobbying services with international communities and international associations and they have signed several uh, cooperative agreements sharing information and know-how with several Chinese uh, associations, uh, Japanese association, uh, from Europe, from Germany, some German association as well. Uh, these are our uh, main service that we are providing to the agriculture community. In 2013, uh, the board and the General Assembly of the association decided to share their accumulative know-how and experience that is built according to the international standards in growing horticulture crop for the past history of HEA and develop this uh, corporate social responsibility policy targeting only small holders. And our definition for small holders is 10 fed them or less in 12 governorates, providing them with full extension service for free and even the post harvest services activity and linking them with exporters to increase their income and improve their uh, living standards. This is in a nutshell, and these are our team that I'm proud of. Uh, and finally, we're looking to share our experience uh, with this platform and cooperate with all uh, African and European uh, cooperatives that needs to uh, share our experience, or even if we want to share their inputs to enhance our experience. And thank you so much. Thank you, dear Iman. Heya is really a model uh, for the whole country. As I said a moment ago, the members of Heya are the ones who have 
enabled the progress of Egypt's uh, exports uh, of fresh fruits and vegetables at international standards. And it's really an achievement uh, you can be proud of and we are all proud of. I am. And what is really uh, of interest is the, the, the approach of uh, making available the knowledge developed in the large commercial farms to the small farms. And now we are going to hear the opinion of a colleague of Heya uh, in Morocco, our Mr. Amin Mahtawi Belabes who is the Managing Director of the Cooperative Mar Marocaine de Primeur. Uh, Mr. Belabes has been kind enough to take the time to answer to uh, the key questions we have put as organizers of this uh, workshop uh, in order, again, as mentioned to you, uh, to uh, obtain the, uh, the, the basis uh, to start building this uh, North Africa Europe uh, alliance within this private sector sphere. So, Mr. Belabes, please go ahead. Salam alaikum. Ahlan. Thank you. Is the upper new. And. Um, I'm very happy to be here among you today. I see that uh, the different presentations are more uh, focused on presenting what each one of the presenters is doing. I didn't, uh, I didn't go in this sense. I thought it was uh, uh, more, um, more interesting to, to speak about my opinion on the subject. Sorry, I think this is some, there's something wrong with my connection. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. He we can hear you now. Okay, thank you. So, okay. um, and the screen is back. Yes, please. Uh, uh, the the food and nutrition security and sustainability, in my point of view, starts with. Um, with local security of food. And uh, I, I've been working during all my career in the export sector. And I know that this is a sector where pro profitability is in general, um, something uh, that drives innovation and research and investment and everything. This is uh, very different from what should drive food and nutrition security for the local communities. And I believe that um, to, to be able to achieve uh, good results in, uh, in securing uh, food and nutrition for local uh, countries in Africa, we have to have a research and innovation um, uh, platform that is mainly um, driven by the locals There are comp uh, competencies in all countries, engineers and technicians that are able to, to drive their uh, research and innovation programs locally. They need funding, they need uh, support, and they need uh, technology and things like this. But it, we, we should not go where we are now heading, where, which, uh, which, is, which is only important solutions from Europe. And partnerships is always copying and trying to do the same and adapting things from Europe into Africa. I believe, and here in Morocco, we have many examples, many good examples of research that are being done here with local objectives funded by Europe or America or whatever, or funded also locally. And the results are always better and more sustainable and stay longer in the future when it is adapted to the local needs, really. The main futures, in my sense, is uh, should enable the local entities that are existing or even create new ones 
to perform high-end research and innovation programs uh, and empower them to create their own research programs. The focus should be on two things from my perspective. Uh, if we want agriculture to be a driver for food and nutrition security, we should focus mainly on genetics. Genetics is from uh, my point of view, the key driver for, for, uh, for uh, bringing more profitability into agriculture. And hence, uh, a profitable agriculture is sustainable and can support food and nutrition security in, in locally. So this is the first and main very important aspects is genetics. And then the second thing, and this is something that is also changing and we should adapt to it uh, constantly. This is what I, I like to call the low cost technology. Low cost technology is every means that are um, within the hands of the grower that allow them to perform better agricultural results with low cost um, tools, mainly technological, to, to perform better irrigation, fertilization, and uh, all the aspects of the agriculture techniques. This low cost technology is the, uh, the second key driver for me to, to increase performance. And again, my, my point is that the more we increase performance and uh, profitability of agriculture, the more we make this agriculture sustainable for local, uh, local communities. And this is where food and nutrition security comes from. Then once, once we have this sustainability at the local level, it's always very easy to build up on that and maybe start even exporting. But the first, the basis should be to, to make a sustainable agriculture for the local communities. The role of the private sector, being farm or farmer organizations or businesses or whatever, should focus on investing more in R&D. In R &D. And uh, this investment is, um, the, the main challenge with this investment is that there is no very short term results. It always takes time with R&D to get, uh, to get the, uh, the return on investments. And uh, that's why it is important also to have, um, to have uh, fundraising capability. And this is maybe the role of the other structures, but that the role of the private sector is mainly to invest more the, the, uh, as much as possible. And the second aspect is uh, to invest in product transformation locally. I think you are always all aware of uh, different products where it's quite easy to produce because the climate and uh, the conditions are propitious for uh, this, those products. And once we have big uh, peak of productions, most of the product is being thrown away. So product transformation is something also that, is, uh, that uh, can help uh, build capability locally. And uh, the organizations should gain more legitimacy. Those organizations like former organizations or associations, they should gain more legitimacy to convince growers of the interest of aggregation models. This kind of models are now uh, very hot in Morocco, very sexy because uh, we have uh, good uh, subventions from the government to aggregate the growers. Those models allow small growers to, to use new technologies and benefit from exports, uh, subventions and things like this. So in this aggregation models and all relation between growers and governments are always facilitated with the organizations that have high legitimacy. So this is my point for uh, organizations. Then, the well-structured former organizations should be able to organize production to avoid value destruction due to overproduction. When we produce too much because we didn't coordinate anything, we end up losing value on sectors. Uh, uh, Dora, do I still have time to finish my presentation or is that time up? 
You are muted, Tora. Yes, unfortunately, it's time up. Okay, uh, thank you. I, I, do, I do hope that you are with us with the, for the remaining of the day so that we can continue this very, very important uh, discussion and uh, go further into the topics you have indicated. They are crucial. Okay, Dora. Good. It's okay, thank you. Good, good. Thank and you. now we, thank you, thank you very much. And now we invite to the floor Dr. Daniele Rossi, our dear friend. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, who is uh, sharing? Uh, I try to share uh, the presentation. Yes. Uh, now you have to. You have to say to me. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, we are uh, cleaning uh, the screen you. for you. There you are. Yes, and we are, I send you also the second slide. Eh? Is it there? Is it there? Uh, yes. With the, with the list of the questions. Okay, we'll, uh, do you want to present this one first or the this other one? one this one first. Okay, so go ahead and we'll prepare the other one. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Joseph uh, Dov. Uh, I want to present myself uh, as you uh, see, I'm the chairman of uh, the working party of research innovation of Copacogeca. <clears throat> At the same time, I'm a farmer. I'm proud to be a farmer in the heart of Italy. We call it the green heart of Italy. And at the same time, I'm the delegate research and innovation of the Confederation of Farmers in Italy. Uh, the previous one, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, as uh, Copacogeca, uh, we started to find uh, common priorities between uh, 27 countries, 28 countries before the Brexit. And uh, if you see, may see on the left side of the slide, you, have, uh, you may see the list of the main priorities uh, to be shared with you with the North African uh, countries. Uh, there are the, what is very new of this list of priorities has spent two years to find these common priorities. Uh, what is new? Uh, not the green growth, uh, climate change, mitigation, yield gap, and so on. Uh, sustainable intensification is the same as you listened before. Not the healthy farming, because it's the same as you listened before to also with the MBTs and GTs and genomic techniques. It is new, really new, is uh, the uh, exchange knowledge between farmers, so to put as a priority farmers learning from farmers and farmers leading innovation as a noble effect to the others. It's very new, uh, how to invent and reinvent uh, the trainees and the training activities between farmers and using the farmers itself as a trainers. And this new part, the second new part is the fair and competitive value chain as you may see, new business models after the pandemic situation uh, we had in, in, in Europe. So a, a completely new strategy for rebuilding and shortening the value chains uh, of our uh, agri-food products. This is very, very new uh, in our priorities. And we could share uh, these priorities with the North African countries and North African platform, African European platform. Uh, in terms of challenges on the right side, uh, we uh, built this very easy uh, list uh, of main challenges uh, for our countries uh, through the uh, coordination of the National Food Technology Platforms. Uh, you know that in 2005, we start, I was the chairman of the first one, we started with the European Technology Platforms, Food for Life, and the national ones. I try to invite also Egypt and Morocco and uh, Tunisia to be part of this uh, national food technology platform also in the southern Mediterranean countries. And uh, uh, it's very important to share uh, the challenges and to find uh, how to build this common platform. Uh, uh, between the challenges, you may see uh, globalization, new market, new logistics. Logistics 
is uh, more and more important with the e-commerce and the uh, cold and cool chains. So uh, from, from your countries, um, we have to reinvent uh, and to shorten and to uh, give more efficiency to our logistic chains. Then we have to, to maintain uh, the quantities, not so only the qualities of our raw materials, uh, uh, fighting scarcity, um, getting get more resiliency in our, in our food productions. And then we have also, um, as a business model, we have also uh, the problem of uh, rural communities, uh, as uh, we said before. Rural communities and uh, urbanization in a circular economy will be very, very important in the future. And how to mix uh, in the correct way urban, peri-urban, rural communities uh, in uh, circularity. It's very important, it's a team, uh, not only of research, it's a team also of innovation, but also it's an organizational team we have to fight in the future, to face in the future. And then last but not least, as Dora uh, Fiani knows very well, we have all the nutritional policies and the sustainable diets. Uh, we had also a, a very nice project named Better Foods, but uh, it, it, it seems uh, very, very important, as you may know, also for the international organizations, but it's not so easy uh, to understand what we intend as a sustainable diet, uh, because we may intend, uh, in terms of nutritional policies, we may intend in terms of economical policy, but we intend also in terms of environmental policies there. And it's not so easy to mix and to match and to have all the three together in the same diet. So we need a KPI, we need indicators on that. Uh, what the f what's the future for our uh, technology platforms and for our uh, collaboration, our building, uh, our capacity uh, building together on the uh, research innovation activities? We need a more competitive uh, agri-food industry and competitive chains, more innovation as we, uh, we listened before in farming and food processing. We have to uh, uh, reinvent uh, uh, farming system and also food factories of the future uh, because uh, uh, not only logistics change, but also the need of the consumers are changing a lot. Uh, also after the pandemic, uh, then we have a, a problem of resource efficiency in the circular economy and to recover uh, by products uh, and uh, uh, waste and losses, not only from the urban cycle, but also from the rural cycle. Added value of quality poor foods, uh, the traditional ones, but also the novel one. And uh, this is cited the better food activity we had with our project. Then uh, uh, diet new dietary needs for young people at early pregnancy and other target group. Uh, uh, early detection of chemical and microbiological hazards. And very, very important, very new, is the downscaling, because we are always speaking about upscaling, uh, thinking uh, on the scale economies and uh, very, very, very important quantities to be produced for, for our consumers. But also uh, we see that consumer need, 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 uh, consumers need biodiversity, need uh, uh, niches, need uh, also specific traditional products. So we have to, uh, also to be uh, with the same efficiency on downscaling and down costing our uh, food processing, uh, giving uh, new uh, machines, uh, new organizations, also for uh, very modest productions in our villages, for example, in our uh, rural communities. And this, uh, last but not least, uh, as you may know, uh, policies on food and drink uh, production are still very, very important. Uh, cohesion uh, policies of rural areas, but also uh, how, to, this is the last point, how to build and rebuild uh, infrastructures uh, who you for using digital agenda in the uh, very internal areas in our countries. Daniele, Daniele, yes. <laughs> we, you, you only have a few seconds. I finish, I finish now, exactly okay. now. Okay, okay, great. Uh, about infrastructure and digital agenda. Okay, 
and uh, uh, is is uh, Keith Blokland with us? Hello. Yes, I'm here. Yes. Good. Uh, Keith, I have. We have a big uh, favor to ask from you because. We were delayed due to the IT problems at our end. Uh, Dr. Alia Busaba, our expert, needs to leave at 12. So would you mind if we ask, give him the floor, and then we continue with you? No, 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 of course not. No problem. That's great. Thank you so very much. So Dr. Ali, please, the floor is yours. Uh, okay, well, thank you so much, uh, Dora and everyone, uh, for inviting Yekarda and associating us uh, with this very important event. Uh, you know, Yekarda is uh, the International Center for Agricultural Research in the Dry Areas. And uh, as you know, the uh, majority of the North African countries, if not all, uh, are uh, fall within uh, the dry areas. And the agriculture practices, except for Egypt, uh, are mostly, uh, you know, rain-fed. Uh, and of course, the exception is, is in Egypt, where uh, irrigated agriculture is big. But uh, the expansion uh, of the uh, agriculture lands there are critical to meet the future needs uh, of the country. And therefore, even exploring options for expanding agriculture uh, using uh, dryland techniques uh, are also uh, critical and important. So uh, uh, just to add that uh, ICARDA, as you all know, is one of the uh, CGIR centers, which has undergone a major reform process that now brings in all the centers, all of those working on policy, on water, on fisheries, on crops, all crops, not just the crops uh, that are mandated for ICARDA, as well as uh, water uh, and, of course, the genetic improvements. So uh, ICARDA has been designated to be uh, the focal point in uh, the Central and West Asia, as well as Middle East and North Africa. So we are able to bring in uh, the agricultural research and the innovations uh, arising from 50 years of research to the region well beyond what ICARDA has traditionally been able to uh, bring uh, to this part of the world. So that's my first point. My second point is, uh, you know, we have been uh, 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 emphasizing the importance of agricultural research and innovations in North Africa in particular, because most of what we develop by way of technologies, especially to deal with the climate challenge, the water scarcity and the climate variability, are those technologies that will be needed in Europe in the future. People can uh, discuss and agree or disagree on when will this be needed, but uh, we believe that it will be needed much sooner than what we thought earlier. So there is more reason for strategic uh, partnerships and strategic relationships between Europe and North Africa in particular, where we are able to develop the technologies that are needed by Europe in the future. And that is more reason to invest in agricultural innovations, in research, to be able to make uh, these partnerships um, um, fruitful for both uh, parties. And I think the platform uh, that is uh, uh, the reason we are uh, coming together uh, could uh, be a very instrumental in uh, bridging the gaps in promotion of technologies, in uh, forging new partnerships that uh, could uh, help uh, foster uh, these opportunities the best way we can. My third point is um, the role of the private sector. No matter what we do, uh, governments will continue to have the role to set up the policy environment, the enabling environment, provision of major infrastructure, but without the private sector, the farmers, the small farmers, whether they are small, medium, or large, these are the ones who take the agricultural innovations, the technologies, and then taking them to the farm and to scale. And this is where the impact happens. It's not in the research farms, it's in the farmer fields. So how do we 
put in place mechanisms that can take these technologies and for us together to identify where the gaps are and be able to invest to deal with those challenges to unlock the full potential of the private sector in taking this forward. I take a couple of examples in some of the North African countries where the technologies, uh, namely seeds, the wheat varieties that are in farmer fields today, are those that were developed probably 20 years ago. And the varieties that are able to deal with the problems of today with regards to climate variability, the new forms of disease and pests are still on the research. So how do we deal with the whole question of the seed systems, for example? to make sure that the farmers have access to the latest technologies and not technologies that have been accustomed for use and they were developed 20 years ago. Not that they are bad, but they are certainly not sufficient for the type of challenges that we have in uh, today. So how do we unlock this and promote the import and export? I think there are enormous opportunities for partnerships with advanced research institutes in Europe to bring in the technologies into North Africa for them to be tested, to be developed jointly. North Africa is privileged to have very strong research institutes in Tunisia, in Morocco, Algeria, Egypt, and several others. So how do we partner with those organizations in a manner that maximizes the benefits to the private sector? We've heard some of the earlier speakers speaking about the transformation of the extension system. That is a very important link between the research institutes and the latest technologies that are available. How do we leverage technologies together? How do we leverage uh, uh, information, mobile telephony, remote sensing, satellite imaging? And how do we uh, uh, assess and evaluate all of these programs that are out there and be able to deploy them for the best interest of the private operators uh, on the ground? So uh, we, we really hope to see uh, more investments in facilitating the technology transfer and access technology in this part of the world, because we strongly believe that this is the, the gateway to the transformation of the performance uh, of the uh, agriculture, uh, uh, of the agriculture uh, transformation agenda. And of course, the multi-stakeholder approach uh, is the way to go and i think uh, dora and her team have been instrumental in uh, bringing us together and bringing many of those who are interested as evidenced by the very strong participation that we see in the workshop uh, today i don't want to be taking uh, a lot more of your time uh, i've offered some answers to the specific questions on the slide that are available with dora but i wanted to supplement those with some of, of the, my additional views and thank you again for the opportunity and my apology for disrupting your agenda. Thank you so much for associating Nicalda and the one CGIAR with this process. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you very much, Dr. Ali. The, what you said is extremely, extremely beneficial and we definitely count on Nicalda to join the working group, which uh, inshallah is going to be set up immediately after that workshop, because it's clear from what you say, from what the other panelists have said, that the work in front of us is huge, very challenging, and extremely interesting because we are all charting new territories, and we hope to be able to do them together. This is a great perspective. Thank you so very much. And now we are going to give the mic to Dr. Keith Brokland who is going to add another dimension as well. And uh, so we, uh, I believe that, I think you are ready to, uh, yes, to take the mic and yeah. proceed. Yes, yeah, thank you. And again, that is the, the slide you have kindly prepared, but you are of course at liberty to either present additional documents or uh, or comment on the existing one. Thank you very much, Dora. Dr. Brooklyn. Yeah, thank you very much, Dora. And uh, also uh, thanks to Mela Lengstra from the embassy in Cairo, the Dutch embassy, who uh, made the link uh, uh, with uh, this forum. Um, I'm, I think it's a very uh, appropriate and uh, 
and the uh, right thing to do now to talk about this, uh, this issue. Um, as you introduced me already, um, Agriterra is the organization that was founded on my initiative by the Dutch farmers, the Dutch cooperatives and the uh, rural women's organizations. And um, we have a particularity when we work in, uh, in international environments, and that is that we recruit our experts from the cooperatives, from the farmer organizations. Uh, we started with the, with the ones from the Netherlands, uh, but nowadays we recruit in, uh, in many countries of Europe and also uh, abroad in Latin America, Africa and Asia, uh, top-notch uh, cooperative and farm experts uh, who are uh, on a daily basis working in farmer organizations or cooperatives and, and bring them knowledge on the specific items like sustainable intensification, organizational development, um, agro-industrialization, and, um, and policy um, advocacy issues uh, to, um, to their peer, to their colleagues in, uh, in, uh, in different uh, countries of the continent. Um, this model of peer-to-peer, farmer-to-farmer, cooperator-to-cooperator exchange and advice and, uh, and uh, training and exchanges has been in some way also a model for the, the task force rural Africa to say, well, the, the collaboration between Africa and Europe should be not only on a government to government basis, but also on a company to company basis, on a civil society, civil society basis, research to research. And in many, in many areas, it's already happening, but that should be strengthened. It's, it's, it must become a real cooperation between the two continents. And, um, and thinking about the importance of research for, um, for uh, agriculture, uh, I think that one of the issues that we uh, should uh, be clear of uh, is that there should be a kind of a BHAC, a big, hairy, audacious goal uh, that we should set a commonly, uh, what do we want to achieve? I formulated the one, as I see it, in, uh, under point four of my slide, um, that I see that there's a, a need for a, a growing population worldwide to be fed, and uh, so the food production has to increase, uh, but simultaneously we have to uh, to meet objectives like uh, nutrition, uh, sustainability, climate, uh, animal welfare, rural development, and 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 especially also higher income of the, for the poor. And that's something that uh, nowadays in all the climate offensive seems to be forgotten. That there is nearly a need for more welfare in many parts of the world, and um, if you combine all those objectives. It will, it will it establish a need for a, a, a non-existing agricultural technology uh, which has to be developed. And I, I guess that the, 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 the area where it should be developed is Africa, because there is the biggest challenge. And so uh, research and development should go to Africa and uh, in, in, in close uh, coordination between uh, African and European uh, scientists we should develop that, uh, that new uh, technology that can, leave, that can bring that uh, ambitious uh, innovation and uh, catalytic change um, in agriculture. And then the other point that I wanted to make is about the, uh, the levels. We often see uh, scientists uh, going down to grassroots farmer organizations to try and establish a policy and research agenda. And I think that is wrong. Uh, um, there are national farmer organizations who are the ones who should be involved in discussion on, uh, on research agendas. Um, and there is an, that's the national level. Um, but there's another level, which is the, the level where things are done, which is in fact on the level of, of farmers, uh, where the trials can be done, where uh, monitoring should be uh, established, where data collection can take place. We're also efforts to segment the, uh, the whole universe of farmers because there are so many farmers so different and with so different ambitions. Um, and there should be differentiated technical assistance to the different segments of, uh, of the farmer community. Uh, but that's another level. But on the highest level, I think that uh, we should think of, um, of research entities and uh, together with the government, together with private sector, together with farmers organizations, um, try to formulate better that BHEC that I tried to formulate in, in point four, but that's something that should be, be done on that level. Uh, it should also establish at that level the, the theory of how to come to, to, to achieve that, that BHEC. What is our theory of change? How do we get to that point? And also the, the big issues of this time, uh, climate, food security, uh, all the trends that are witnessed in, 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 in global development, 
and that have the, that will have their impact over time on on farmers, um, uh, even uh, trends in in, in climatological uh, uh, issues. Uh, the, the, the consequences of that should be uh, brought uh, to the to the level of the farmer in some way or another, but they, they should be addressed at uh, at that higher level. So basically, that is um, that is my uh, my contribution. That there, there must be some kind of an overarching uh, big uh, Harry Auditious goal. Um, uh, you know, the, the biggest one was we bring a man to the moon and and, and take it back. Uh, a life it was formulated by uh, John F. Kennedy in 1960 and it was made a reality in 1969. We should have a similar big, hairy, ambitious goal for uh, agricultural development uh, in the world and especially in Africa and North Africa. And uh, from that, um, make in uh, a common agreement uh, between research, government, private sector, and farmers uh, the effort together and, and then do it on the right level. And, uh, and, and um, um, I, I formulated the three levels and I hope it will be useful for the further uh, uh, discussion uh, in this platform. Thank you very much.